Many years ago, I worked at the WHO in Geneva, and we were shocked. We looked at, we were looking at Ebola and heart disease and obesity and diabetes, and it came out that stress was the number one health epidemic of the 21st century. It's not our imagination, it's everywhere. It is in our homes, and it's in our workplace. In fact, 60% of people say their work is their primary place of stress. It causes absenteeism, workplace turnover, you all know this, uh, $20 billion a year in cost. So let's look at stress, this is my area, and why is such a problem? Our human brain, amazing human brain, when we think of stress, what it does, it moves us from this higher level of thinking, our upper cortex, our prefrontal cortex, into this primitive place, and we have a stress response. And our stress response is freeze, fight, or flight. So if we think about it, freeze, anxiety, feeling overwhelmed, trouble getting out of bed, fight, tension, irritability, anger, rage, flight, escapism, alcohol, drugs, shopping, internet, uh, reality TV. Sorry, David, I didn't mean the, the dragon stand. That's a good one. Uh, so this is what it does, and we operate on these automatic instincts versus conscious choices. Now, you already saw my slide, but I was going to say that nobody is immune to stress, not even the experts. Uh, when I became a parent, this is what happened to me. So those are my three kids, and I wasn't immune. In fact, I became overwhelmed with uh, all the things I had to do. I couldn't figure out how I was having such a hard time raising my three kids when my own mom successfully raised five with far few conveniences, less education. She didn't even go to school, actually. She didn't go to grade one. So I knew I was missing something really simple. And simple is not easy. In fact, it's pretty simple to drink water. But 80% of us right now in this room are dehydrated. You can have a sip here. Uh, and we know, we know that we need to drink water, but knowing is not doing. In fact, so much of what we know to do is intuitive, but it's the acting on what we know. Luckily, doing equals being. So if we drink the water, we will feel hydrated, we'll feel refreshed, our irritability, our mood, our tiredness will be relieved. So that's what led me to write the book, The Dolphin Way. It has been called a scientific book of common sense. And I had to really think about these things that, how was I missing something so simple? How did I not do what I knew? And I first had to figure out what I wanted. And what is all this stress for? What is this all about? What are we all looking for? And that's, of course, an awesome life. We all want an awesome life, don't we? So what is it? And researchers studied people who were dying at the end of a very long life, and they asked them this question. And the answer was universal. It was a life of balance, enough of all of the things that are important. Health, security, wealth, passion, purpose, connection, and joy. The first century is the most fast-paced, rapidly changing century. It is the century of stress, but it's also called, anyone know what the, the 21st century is being called? We moved from agricultural era to manufacturing to information tech. We're now in something, sorry, called the conceptual era. And the conceptual era is an era that is ultra competitive, and there's new skills for this era. There's four key 21st century skills, and they are creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking. All of these skills are the ingredients for ad adaptation and adaptability. I call them CQ. And the reason why we can think of CQ is if we go back to our brain. The 19th century IQ was really popular. It was the, the dominant thing. Uh, knowledge was limited to bookstores and to libraries or to people's heads. And the individual who had analytical, technical skill did really well. The 20th century came, and with technology, we didn't need to know the answer to anything anymore. We needed to ask the right question, to apply that knowledge in diverse settings, to adapt with social situations. And of course, we don't want to work from just our left brain or our right brain. This IQ, EQ debate is false, actually. We need our full brain. We need an integrated brain, and that's CQ. So how do we get to this place of adaptability, of CQ? 
it really is balance. Remember, an awesome life is about balance. The first part is balanced relationships. So I use a metaphor, uh, it's not a label, but it's a metaphor of three interpersonal styles. On one end would be the tiger. Has anyone heard of tiger mom? So there's a tiger boss, and there's a tiger friend, and there's a tiger colleague. The tiger personality style, somebody really well-meaning, well-intentioned, but they are overbearing. By directing, micromanaging, hovering, they add stress and reduce CQ, reduce the ability to adapt. It's a stifling environment. On the other end is the jellyfish personality, or boss, or friend, or parent. Well-meaning, well-intentioned, lack focus, lack direction, lack structure. And we see that stress goes up because we're not sure where we're going, where are the guidelines and our ability to adapt goes down. We're not being nudged forward. So in these work environments, staplers go missing, people forget their um, deadlines. Now, the balance of these two extremes, it's the metaphor of the dolphin, okay? So the dolphin, boss, parent, employer, colleague, is adaptable. They use their CQ. They communicate, they collaborate. And unlike the jellyfish, they're firm with their expectations, but they're flexible, unlike the tiger. They're in this sweet spot of collaboration. They have challenge, they bring challenge without stress. And we know that actually, studies prove this again and again, increases our ability to adapt, our creative thinking, our critical skills, our ability to collaborate. So that is the balanced relationships, the dolphin relationship. Like I said, a metaphor. To what's causing us problems in our personal lives, in our professional lives, um, and right now an epidemic in the world. These activities and this dolphin relationship, this metaphor is designed to take us out of freeze, fight or flight, anxiety, irritability, escape, and move us into a place of our higher cortex, a place of balance where we can make conscious choices, and with those con con uh, conscious choices, we can now interact with our environment versus react with what's happening.